Hey everyone and welcome to my channel and to this video. I hope you're fine today and up for some little animal painting. We will be painting a deer and I did made my sketch a little bit earlier on just a regular printing paper. Actually I did the, the, this one on my tablet so then I printed it and I also prepared a sketch for you to download so you can use the link down in the description box and go to my website and download the sketch for yourself also then trace it onto a watercolor paper using maybe a window or a graphite paper as I usually do and if you don't have a graphite paper and using a block same as I am just scribble on the back of your paper and then trace it and that's basically it after finished with that I just used a artist eraser needed eraser just to pick up the excess graphite and then moved on to my painting first I prevented that you can see right side of my painting and then on top of it added a little bit of the pigment I've mixed in some blue and black and added it here and there also not one same wash but I left some parts lighter some little bit darker then again same thing on the left side and when finished with those both sides of the ground I moved on to painting the wood and also a little bit the sky sky will be slightly visible behind our woods just just barely visible and then also I prevented that part and just added the most pigment on the corners right and left upper corner and then did some uh, vertical lines for the trees and also just around smudged a little bit of the paper just to fill in the gaps but I do want the shapes of the trees behind I won't be a I won't be painting trees or any details to the trees I will just be doing the shapes of the trees and the impressions of the trees now I am using a little bit smaller brush as you can see I'm just doing the shapes and not really trying to paint every single tree and every single branch but just making the impression of those trees and when finished with my woods I would leave this paper to dry completely actually I will <laughs> dry it with a hair dryer and when dry completely I moved on to painting my deer and I started with his horns and those I will be painting in a light wash of brown this is just a mix of brown and yellow to get this very very light color and also I will be using a light wash as I said and ju then just on top of it while it is still wet because I do want the paint right now to bleed also I am picking up a little bit darker paint and this is quite smaller brush with a very pointy tip and it doesn't hold a lot of water so you don't want here the brush that holds a lot of water because it will spread all around your horns and just leave the puddles and that's not what we want we want here a brush that can hold a lot a lot less water or if you're using a brush that is real hair natural hair maybe just dry it on your towel before you move on to painting your horn I am using a little bit more of the shades of a darker color. I did use a little bit darker brown color and then also a black color which I in which I've added a little bit of that brown because I don't want it to be black. I do want it to be a little bit darker. Then again that's darker brown I'm using. And then just doing some details to the horns as you can see. I'm just adding those lines making some parts a little bit darker, some parts a little bit lighter. Like there are some in the shadows but also those horns, deer horns are actually not one same uh, color or one same texture. They do they uh, have a lot of texture so I'm just mimicking that texture. When finished with the right horn I'm moving on to the left one and also doing the same thing. First I did a light wash of the color then on top of it added a little bit darker with this quite thin brush pointy tip brush and then added again lines with even darker color. When finished with that while that was drying I moved on to painting the head of my deer and also I used a quite light again very very light wash of color this skin that a light brown and yellow mix and I also in same color I also painted the body of the deer I do want it to have the first layer in one even same wash and then on top of it I will be adding details 
and right now I am doing those details same thing as with the horns I'm using this uh, thinner brush and with a very pointy tip and then adding a little bit of the details some darker paint on the ears of the deer also on his head and on his well I will also do that on his body Again, I am layering colors. I'm adding, I started with a lighter color and on top of it added a little bit darker and on top of it, the darkest color I will be using. So that is actually the way you do with watercolors. You start with the, with the lighter colors, add them first and then build on top with the darker watercolors because you know, you can't start with the darkest watercolor and then move on to the lightest because of course they wouldn't be visible. So you're starting with the lightest tones on your painting, then moving on to a little bit darker shades and then on, at the end finishing with the darkest. So just keep that in mind. If you can just tr uh, try to start with the lighter tones and then move on to the darker ones his nozzle I'm painting uh, in well quite a dark color this is quite dark brown and black color and also just beneath his eyes and the top of his head I am doing as, as you can see right now I am doing very much um, a lot of a lot of layers because all those layers will be slightly visible later on and that is how you you build the depth and how we can achieve the hair looking deer if you paint just one wash as you can see right now his body is just in one wash if you do that you won't achieve the um, layer you won't achieve the looks of layers and textures and his hair just build on slightly go with the lighter lightest to darkest colors and build slightly layers one on top of it another i do want that part of his neck that is actually nearest to the head to be lighter so i'm i am leaving that part lighter and the back of his head i do want it to be darker so that is the that is where i'm painting his head the darkest and also you could have seen i did disconnect his um, his neck or, and his body so right now i'm just connecting those two while the paint is still wet i do want it to look connected i don't want it to make it look as his head is sticked on his body so just on the back i have connected those two and all the time as you can see when i'm doing my brush strokes all the time i'm just thinking about the shapes of the object i'm painting if i'm painting his neck i'm just thinking how the hairs will go on his neck if i'm painting his horns i'm thinking how they how they look how the shapes and uh, textures are on that horns also same thing on his head on his body i'm just all the time minding the shape of my object that is very important if your object is vertical don't paint don't do the horizontal strokes because you know that will just collide with his shape and wouldn't look good wouldn't look believable but if your object is um, vertical do the vertical strokes so as you can see right now i'm just all the time minding the shape the movement and uh, the movement of the hair positioning on the hair of the parts of his body his head his ears just always minding that uh, in when painting and just following those shapes Right now this is just uh, black, I'm painting in his eyes and as you can see I did leave this one little, little part in the corner of his eye white and that is the part that it looks as though there is just some reflection and makes that eye look alive, not, not dead, you know, because when you paint an eye you always add that little dot, just that light that is reflected in the eye. And again, I'm just doing uh, details, adding some hairs, some again details on every each part of my deer where I see fit and where I see suitable. Again, with that uh, brush with a pointy tip and well, I guess a thinner brush, I'm adding some lines, making it look as though those are very, very small hairs. So as you can see right now and also going outwards of the line of his body because we don't want to, look, to, to make it look as though his body is uh, smooth. He, it's not. There are a lot of hairs. So just at the edges of his body, just add a little bit of the hairs and it will make the impression that there are hairs 
all around his body. You will see that. So I am adding a little bit more hairs on his head, on his neck, and also right now on the other part of his body, just to make it look as though there are some hairs. A little bit more details to his horns and you can make them as dark or as light as you like and also when doing the strokes on his horns just mind the shape and the movement of his horns to make it believable as you can see that one on the left side has this has this curve so I did follow with my strokes I did follow again that curve and right now I'm just using a white gouache, picking up some white gouache and adding a little bit more details to his, uh, to his face, to his nozzle and to his ears and just doing the, making some white uh, little lines for white hairs on him and don't worry, these are gonna dry a lot, lot lighter because you know even white gouache, when it dries, it dries lighter. I'm not using it very creamy and and uh, but I'm using it slightly washed down and with the water so when it dries it will be quite lighter and I'm just adding it everywhere where I do want to add some highlights highlights and also I will be adding it and there you go right now I'm adding a little bit more of the, the white gouache a little bit more highlights here and there on his horns also and as I said it that white will dry lighter so it won't be so visible as it is right now. A little bit more of the highlights and white gouache on his body and now I'm just using a little bit of the darker paint and again going back and forth with a little bit darker of paint and with the white gouache adding some details here and there covering the white and covering the black and just back and forward until I'm satisfied with the colors and the last thing I'm doing is adding some splatters and snow in white first and then I've added just a little bit of grayish color to make some of those uh, splatters a little bit gray because you know on the white paper the white gouache sprinkles aren't really visible and with that I'll be finishing off this painting and of course this video thank you guys a lot for watching for all your support I do hope you like this video and if you do please hit the like button share it comment if you haven't still please do subscribe to my channel that would really mean a lot to me and maybe consider joining my channel that would really mean also a lot to me and thank you to all who already did join my channel you you are amazing and I'm so very grateful to you and also thank you to all of those who bought my palettes in my shop they're all sold out for now I will be making more but you know probably when <laughs> these holidays finish up so again thank you thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time bye